How's it going everyone, I'm the Able Runner and welcome back to another video. So I haven't made one in a while and I thought, do you know what, with Alien Covenant releasing worldwide tomorrow, why not make a review of it? So, without further ado, this is a spoiler warning, as I will be discussing the, uh, the plot and what I enjoyed about the film. So, um, if you haven't seen it or don't want to know, I suggest you either come back tomorrow, when it's released and hopefully you've seen it, or, um... Or you follow the timestamp that I will probably put on the screen now. Uh, yeah, on with the review! Firstly, let's discuss the plot. So I'm going to be doing this without a script. I wrote one, uh, I could probably put it on the screen now if you want to see. But to be honest, I'm not good at following them. So, the... The movie starts with David, the synthetic from Prometheus, talking with Mr. Whalen about you know, his... Um, his ethical, ethical issues with his creator, and the fact that while humans are, you know, humans control the synthetics, they will eventually wither out and die, whereas, well, David will be alive, you know, alive forever. And he questions who it is that made humans. So, after Mr. Wayland orders him to uh, get some tea, he then just says, this is what we're going to find out. As in, this is sort of the, well, I guess you could call it the prequel to Prometheus, which is also a prequel to Aliens, um, because obviously that was all about them trying to discuss, well, trying to discover who it was that created them. So it then, after a very Aliens uh, title sequence, it cuts to the the Covenant, who are of a colonization ship with about 15 crew members and thousands of colonists, who are on their way to a planet called Uragai 6, and they are planning to colonize this planet, obviously, probably due to overpopulation on Earth. Uh, and they're all made, you know, it's a ship entirely made up of couples. Uh, they go out in their spacesuits and they set up a, a beacon sort of thing. However, they're then hit by an electromagnetic wave, which sets the, uh, creates a lot of disturbance on the ship and it sets some things on fire, uh, disrupting the sleeping chambers, uh, which then causes the captain of the ship to basically set a light in his, um, in his cryopod. So obviously he dies, and we see the ship and the crew mourning. However, they then trace the, the source of the electromagnetic magnetic wave back and figure out it's, it's actually a song. Uh, we later... We'll, we'll go into more detail on this on later. So, they then follow it to, uh, well, a very inhabitable planet that they find with, um, it's basically reminiscent of Earth. And they think, well, why don't we try here? Because it's, it's weeks further than it is to uh, Aurigai 6, which will, which will take about six, seven years for them to re to arrive at. So they decide to take a detour and head to this planet. So once over there, they all head into a small cryopod. Uh, it's a ship and the AI Walter with Mother, which is the other AI on the ship, uh, and a couple of a couple of the other ones who are piloting the ship, they all stay behind. So they get in this small ship and they head down to the planet in a very sort of um, very surreal and quite nice, nicely shot way, um, and. They then start following the source. So they, they all get out of the ship, set things up, and they walk off. Um, two of them staying behind for archaeological purposes in order to explore and study what it is on this planet that there is. Meanwhile, the others go to the crash Prometheus ship, which is currently the thing uh, beaconing the signal, which took them down. Um, so, as they are... Uh, as the, as the person is, <laughs> you know, uh, digging up soil and whatnot to test, uh, one of the person who stayed with her goes for a smoke, as one does on an alien planet. So he triggers a spore by accident, which then decides to borrow itself into his ear. Meanwhile, on the Prometheus ship, they activate things, finding Elizabeth Shaw's dog tags, as well as her um, AI sort of, well hologram of her in the pilot chair controlling the ship which gives us a bit of you know explanation as to what happened in the fact that they crashed 
and uh, another one of these spores goes off heading into one of the guy's nose. So some time passes, and these people who have been infected start to get very sick. And they're bleeding, and they're pale, and they're shaking violently. So the, archaeolo eh, the archaeological, uh, whatever you'd call it, she begins to take him back to the ship, you know, to get him checked out at the med bay. And this is when we start seeing, you know, this is when start, things start getting good. So he's shaking violently and they get him to the med bay before his back starts sort of convulging and exploding out with um, with blood and these talons or whatever, you, these spikes breaking out of the back of his, his spine and whatnot. And uh, after a bit of time, the his back sort of bursts and we get introduced to one of our new aliens, which I will happily call the Backbuster. Now... This thing is tiny. It's about the size of my hand. But uh, it it jumps after uh, one of the crew and sort of rips off their face, which is not very nice. <laughs> the whole scene is that very sort of... It's quite gory and stuff, but it's also... It's, it's quite beautifully... Well, if you could call it that. It's very nicely done, if that makes sense. The the aliens obviously CGI, but I actually think it looks really good. Um... I don't think they don't really show it as much in the. I don't think they show it at all in the trailer, but uh, yeah, it's looking good. So this thing then escapes the room, being very tiny, and goes after the third crew member, who's sort of the um, uh, the doctor of the crew, who tries to shoot at it, ends up shooting a gas canister and blows up the ship. Although this little thing escapes, and she's just left burning alive. <laughs> so the other crew members start heading back to the. Uh, the med bay, hearing of, you know, this guy's sick and he's dying and whatnot. And this is when the other guy starts having problems. So he's shaken violently. And um, because of the way that it enters, I believe it, it changes, obviously, where um, the black goo infests, you know, where it changes their body and into something new. So this thing then erupts from his mouth, which is quite nice. <laughs> Joking, of course. Um, but yeah, this thing is larger than the other one and clearly more dangerous as it runs off but then they rapidly they both rapidly grow grow and come back to attack so these things are attacking they bite off um water's hand who's attempting to save one of the crew members and then uh we see a masked figure who comes in and fires a flare in the air this then scares off the other two uh the throat and backbusters before um it's revealed that this is david from the first movie. So he um, he pulls down his, his hood and he brings them back to a charred and dead uh, Promethean, Promethean city. Engineer city? I don't know. I'm going to call them Prometheans. So they're all dead and um, we get a bit of backstory as to what happened. So he's, uh, we get a flashback and we see the ship come down. The, they're attempting to land. However, the black goo sort of detonates from the ship and wipes all of them out, which is why they're all sort of charred and drowning. Um, we also hear that the ship then crashed because of the surprise of the, obviously, the, the things dropping, which killed Elizabeth, Elizabeth Shaw with it. So David then starts speaking to um, Walter, trying to convince him that he they are above humans. They are the next step up. And he tries to teach him uh, how to play the flute. Now, it doesn't take too long before Walter Walter talks about how he he doesn't want to you know he doesn't want to wipe out the humans. However, we see um, we see in this lab that David has been experimenting on all different things, the black goo, the the effects of it, all these different creatures. And it's at this time that they're trying to contact the Covenant, which is um, the ship, and it's slowly going into the planet's atmosphere in order to pick up the signal, as this planet is full of storms, and overall it's just not a very nice place. So, David uh, starts talking, you know, he starts talking about his plan, well, not really his plan, He's he talks about how he's, you know, on this planet, He's he's been exp investigating and experimenting on all these different things, and the effects of the black goo, and what's been going on. However, uh, Walter then leaves and we see the um the neomorph or the blackbuster 
No, actually it's a throat buster, I believe. The, the back one isn't really seen as much, I guess because it's smaller and more easily killed. So we see him crawl into the Promethean city, and um, he he then appears behind one of the women, who is um, Sully, you know, she's cleaning herself, she's um, washing her hands and getting all this stuff off, and um, it stood behind her, and it slowly creeps up, it's got, it's it's very bland, it's um, it's white, it's, it sort of stands there. However, as she turns around, you see this massive gaping mouth, and it screams at her before it attacks and rips into her throat, and then um, it cuts. So we then see David approach the, the new creature after having um, cut his hair to look more like Walter, and um, we see him approach the new neomorph thing and it sort of it sort of sits there and looks at him as we see the the headless body of the the girl and her head in the um in the river where she was washing herself however this thing doesn't seem to attack david it sort of stares at him although one of the ship the crew members who's behind him pulls a gun out and aims at the the neomorph although david all this time is calming it down he's trying to say don't shoot it and you know this thing trusts me, because it's just sat there and it's looking at him and it's it's seemingly observing him. However, having seen the uh, the head of her, he open fires and kills it, which prompts a very negative response from David. Uh, he doesn't do anything, but he he shouts at him to say that thing trusted me and you killed it. Blah blah blah. So um, we then get some more some more talk between Walter and David, who uh who quotes the poem Ozymandias, uh, look upon my works, ye mighty, in despair, etc. So um, he's talking about, obviously, the effect, you know, how the black goo wiped out the city and what it, what effect it has on it. And also um, looking at the, the grave of Elizabeth Shaw, who he buried in the garden. Um, it's then, it's then revealed that sort of David's motives aren't, all that it seems. So he at first he he try he, he tries to show um the crew member that killed the neomorph what he's what he's been working on. And uh, he leads him down to a basement. You see on the wall there's sort of blueprints and stuff of these different creatures and we finally get a look at the alien eggs. So he ensures him that it's perfectly safe and he leads him into a um what's it called? Well he leads him into a cellar with a bunch of, you know, different alien eggs and he says they aren't hostile so he obviously touches it and takes a look however as it opens um i thought it was a bit weird in the trailer that obviously he leans down and gets attacked because obviously he's um well if you see a giant alien egg opening up and things swelling in it you're not going to bend over and look at it however this is actually due to david who is trusting him, you know, he's making him trust him, he's he's saying, you know, oh, look over, you know, etc. So, um, he does so, and then, obviously, in true alien fashion, it attacks him. And what I found interesting in this one is the fact that this is very different to, in terms of the way it acts to the normal alien films, because we actually see it inject sort of a, um, well, we see, you know, as we know, the aliens, they, um, well, they're facehuggers, they put people to sleep, as, as they inject their egg however we see it attach itself to its face and then sort of eject um it sort of stabs him in the neck or something which um puts him to sleep i guess and um this is when it fades to black before david is throwing stones at him who you know he slowly wakes up and he wonders exactly what's happening although looking up at him he he asks if it's walter because obviously he's shaved his head and uh he's now looking a lot more like walter However, as they talk, it's then interrupted by a massive blood spurt as um, the new alien starts to erupt from his chest. And this is this is very different. This isn't exactly a chest buster. Well, it is. It comes, it bursts out of his chest. But this thing isn't wormy and different. It's more sort of a. It's very small. It's sort of transparentish. It's um, covered in covered in blood. I don't know. It's um, it's very different. It's it's small and quite cute <laughs> but yeah this thing uh looks at david and it's then 
seen that he has control over them because he raises both of his arms and this tiny little alien, he um, he follows his actions. He mimics it. So we then cut to um, another bit who where the, some tri- some some crew members go to look for um, the captain, who is obviously dead, and um, they're also attacked by uh, face, some facehuggers. And um, one gets onto this guy for only a second before it's shot off, and obviously the acid blood takes into effect, which burns through his face, and he's, he's in pain and stuff before um, it cuts, well, it, it fades, well, no, it, Basically, there's there's a sort of a panning long shot to the xenomorph who's in the the air, and he jumps down and attacks them both. Um, the, meanwhile, in another room, David is well, the main girl. I can't remember her name, <laughs> but she's um she's stumbled across some blueprints of Elizabeth Shaw and his experiments on her. So he actually he didn't. You know, she didn't die in the crash. He actually killed her and then sliced her open and experimented on different things. And um, we see this quite clearly, graphically. And um, he then walks in and starts attacking her before Walter comes in and they have a brawl. So there's a synthetic brawl, which is actually quite nicely shot. And it's uh, it's very interesting, which ends with what seems like Walter on top. And he's, um, he's slash- smashing his face with a brick. And uh, he's like, overall, over the course of the films, there's a, there's a clear dyma- dynamic between David and Walter, who um, who calls him brother, because obviously they're both synthetics and Walter is a newer model of David. But also, they're all very close, in a way, because um, in order to get Walter to trust him, David shows him affection, he for some reason, kisses him and says, like, no one will ever show you affection like I will. However, this doesn't really fool uh, Walter, who obviously is on the side of Covenant. So it then cuts to outside where the two remaining crew members are running back to the ship, being trailed by the Xenomorph, who, um, and then David, obviously. Uh, Well, no, actually, it's Walter. So Walter runs out. Walter gets onto the ship with the other two and they start flying. However, the Xenomorph jumps onto the ship and it's sort of crawling around and we get that scene from the trailer that made everyone go, you know, ooh, this looks good. So, um, you know, it starts hitting the ship and starts attacking. However, they, they eventually kill it and they head up to the ship. So once aboard the ship, uh, there's an expedition between Walter and and her and, you know, the, the crew members who are alive. However, it's very short-lived, obviously, as there is another xenomorph on the ship. This is later, it took me a while to realise this, but the guy who was hit by the facehugger, uh, for only a, it only took like a second, but he was infected by one of the one of the xenomorphs, and um, that thing erupted. So, there's another one loose on the ship, and there's, four, there's now four crew members left, two of which decide, you know what, what would be the best thing to do right now? Let's go have a shower. So they're both in the shower and they're, they're doing well, you know. And um, so the xenomorph creeps up and it kills them both. <laughs> and there's blood everywhere. And this is when we see the, um, you see, you know, the, where is it? As, as she opens the curtain and sees the bloodied remains of the two crew members. They, they start leading the xenomorph around with the help of Walter who uh, opens the doors closes the doors you know um, we see we get one point where the xenomorph looks at the camera and then obviously uh, seeing Walter he sort of uh, uses his extendable mouth to break it and stuff uh, they then lead him to sort of an airlock with the bunch of um, a bunch of colonist things um, this is first seen in the start of the film where they're discussing about building a house on the lake and all of this is sort of all of this to start their new life you know um all of this stuff buildings and whatnot wood and nails but anyway um so it ends in a very sort of alien-like way i'm not gonna 
This is this is a very bare bones sort of bit because I don't want to ruin the entire film. So I'm being sort of cautious with what I say, which I'm stumbling a lot. And uh, but basically, it it ends. It meets the same fate as the alien from the first one, <laughs> and um, they then get aboard the ship. So this is where the real spoilers begin. So they um, having believed everything that's done, they set their course for Oregon Six, and they get into the pods, and. After seeing one off, she gets in. She asks, uh, she asks Walter, you know, will will she help? Um, will she, will she, will uh, will he help her build her house on the lake? Which is sort of an ongoing thing during the uh, the first part of the film because obviously her husband dies, uh, who was the captain, and their dream was to build a house beside a lake on Oregon Six out of wood and nails and whatnot. So. He then stares at her before um, she begins to realise that this was not, in fact, Walter. It was David. And David smiles at her as, um, you know, she's screaming and trying to get out, but she can't because it's, you know, the cryopod puts her to sleep. So he then stands up and uses his own security code to Mother, which makes it seem almost as this, as if um, this was all planned. So he uses his security code and starts playing Entry of the Gods into Heaven, which is sort of a an ongoing thing because Walter believes himself to almost be godlike. So he goes to the incubation pods and starts throwing up two um, facehugger embryos, placing them inside of the embryo cryo chamber because this has a bunch of um, frozen human embryos. And then he walks off uh, as the the lights come on while he's walking. And then the, sh the film ends. Now, I understand... <coughs> Sorry, I'm... <coughs> <coughs> Not too well. But, um... I don't know if I've done all that well at explaining the plot. I don't really want to spoil all that much. Because it is a good film. Okay, I want you all to see it. And uh, hopefully, this has, um... I don't know if this has persuaded you somewhat to take a look at... Because... This is all about the origins of the alien. This is all about who created them, what it is that drove, you know, what it is that brought their species to be, which in this case was David. And we, we all, you know, all these mysteries that we've been asking have slowly started to come into effect, if that makes sense. So all of these questions are, not all of them are answered, obviously, but quite a few of them are but um yeah it's overall if if you enjoy the alien films i think you will enjoy this one definitely better than alien 3 or 4 <laughs> and prometheus as for aliens i'm not so sure mainly because i love that film and uh that was i, I think aliens is my favorite of the aliens films you know uh but i definitely do enjoy this one it's a modern take on the alien genre answers a lot of questions we've been wanting to see and see for a while it explores the new um you know the new creatures and whatnot um as for the the, the creatures in the film because i'm sure you all want to know about those yes they are cgi but it's not bad it's actually a, it's a good attempt um i know there were some people who were complaining about the alien and you may not think of this when seeing the film but these were practical um and I'm sure there'll be comments like, Hey, no they weren't, they were all CGI. But I'm going to link a video down below, which is Adam Savage's uh, Tested, which is sort of a, you know, he goes behind the scenes on the Alien Covenant. He used to do Mythbusters and stuff. Um, he goes behind the, the scenes of the Covenant. Uh, and we see how they made the Alien. They have all these different costumes and sets and stuff. And... Um, they actually digitized this, so they do have a practical thing. It's just sort of digitized to make it more animalistic and ferocious. Because in this film, there is a lot of movement that, you know, a human just couldn't do. And I understand that while this will annoy some people, because obviously they want to see full on practical effects aliens, um, when this thing is shrouded in darkness and we see it in the shower scene, it just looks authentic and good. As for the Neomorphs, I, you know, I, I really like the new designs, and I hope we can see more things like this. Um, now, as for my, my score, I would, 
highly recommend this film. I'm not sure if I want to give it a um, a score or not because I want to see what you guys think. So if you if you do have you know if you've seen the film either today or tomorrow or wherever it releases in your your country, leave leave what you thought down below. Um, because I I really enjoyed it, and I think it's definitely worth a watch. I, you know, I I'm I look forward to seeing what they do with it next. I hope um, Alien Awakening, I think it's going to be called. Uh, you know, I hope this continues the the storyline because I want to see what happens with David and this the crew of the Covenant and whatnot. Because um, yeah, I I really enjoyed this film. I I would definitely recommend it to anyone that's a fan of the Alien genre or you know just wants a good film because there are you know there's some jump scares in there uh scenes that made the audience um jump which i found very funny because i'm not really one to jump so seeing the person next to me you know jump in fear is, is i don't know it's, it's an you know it it's an enjoyable experience especially in the cinema i'm not too sure how it will look on home home devices maybe it'll look better maybe it'll look worse i don't know but yeah if all of these practical you know practical sets um you know all of these different atmospheric things that happen i i think they are definitely worth a worth the view and uh especially you know if you can see it in the cinema i would i would recommend it because these there are some gorgeous shots in here and um you can see the filmmakers and ridley scott and all that they've definitely put their time and effort into making this as authentic uh an alien experience as they can and they've definitely learnt from Prometheus and the failure that that was so um yeah I highly recommend this film if you enjoy please like favorite subscribe uh I'm new to obviously the whole reviewing movie thing I just thought it'd be a nice thing to do considering it releases tomorrow uh obviously this is my first proper review I did like a 60 second one for another film a while back but um I tried, you know, I tried to put more effort into this, although this is un unscripted and, uh, you know, very sort of, well, that's what I'm doing now. I'm hesitating to say different things and stumbling on my words. But I did put the effort in to make a script, even if that was entirely useless. <laughs> Again, I'll put that on the screen at some point. Um, but yeah, I, I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, I look forward to seeing what you thought of the film down below. And uh, I'll see you in another video. Yeah. <laughs>